I mean, I'm I'm 59 years old, so we're obviously we're different generations. But I think growing up in the 70s um, as a young lesbian, had I been offered the option of just you know opting out of of girlhood, womanhood, I think I would have taken that had it been available. What well, and, and what actually saved me was meeting feminists, meeting lesbian feminists. Tell me a little bit, if you would, about your decision to transition and what external pressures there were kind of giving you that voice in your head to do it. Yeah, I mean, everything, you know, I mean, it just it just seemed like the thing to do. All right. I mean, it just did not seem like a good option to. To not transition, frankly, you know there wasn't it I didn't really have a vision for what growing up to be a lesbian would look like or how it could turn out well and I had you know tried coming out as a lesbian and it really didn't pan out especially (laughs) and it just seemed like you know it's all all the steps like feel so good like it's like the idea that there's these little there's these things you can do and at the end you'll you're happy you know And that's really appealing when the alternative is a lot more open-ended and there doesn't seem to be a lot of support and narrative around it. You know, from the perspective of me then where I didn't really have much understanding of feminism or lesbian feminism at all, so. So when you were thinking about yourself as a lesbian, did you have an idea of how difficult that might be about the context in which you would come out you just said something really interesting which is that you didn't have a good idea about how being a lesbian would work out for you um it's interesting isn't it that we have so few lesbian role models and that we have so many women that are identifying as non-binary or queer and the word lesbian hasn't been used. What did the, what did the word lesbian mean to you at the time that you were thinking about transitioning? It seemed lame. I don't know. I didn't think it was cool. You know, like I, I just didn't, I didn't have a positive evaluation of lesbianism. And to the extent that I did, it felt like something that was like too cool. You know, it was either like, it was either I don't want to be a lesbian and I'm not good enough to be a lesbian. It's just like flip flopping between those. I don't know. It's like, um, I actually, I remember being like a teen, I learned about trans stuff from Autostraddle because I was like, oh, lesbian stuff. And then half the content is about trans stuff. And I'm like, oh, you know, I think actually my suffering might matter. So that's probably more about me. So, you know, I mean. Wow. that I mean, that is really scary, isn't it? That publications, the online publications, websites, whatever, draw you in as someone who's thinking about your lesbian identity and then captures you with a lot of the trans stuff I mean would you say that was too strong a way of putting it or is that is that pretty much how it was I mean it kind of I mean it was honestly I mean I don't know I I had heard of it before definitely and it was you know kind of growing it was becoming more and more because, I mean, the whole thing with the trans thing is it's just a different paradigm for understanding, like you said, feelings that a lesbian would have in the 70s or 80s, but not necessarily have the language of transition to describe and would then have a different process for handling those feelings, end up with a different result. But when you've got like the transgender paradigm, then that is pretty appealing. There's steps and you complete them. And at the end, you can be happy and be yourself. So that's that's a cool story. And you want to believe that about yourself. <laughs> 